Gerald, of there being your friend for many years, that you are a man of great reflection, uh, of great thought. You write all the time, you ponder. And I'd like to get your thoughts as we start the new year here as where your mind is at. Well, thanks. Uh, hey, I'm very concerned about the future. Uh, you know, I've been at this um, since 1980. And... I've never seen a decline that we're looking at now. You know, one of the trends that we're forecasting, you go back to our Trends Journal magazine on February 22nd, 2022, two days before the Ukraine war started. And the magazine headline read, from COVID war to Ukraine war to world war. Uh, World War III's begun. Uh, they, they, um, they say it's a proxy war between NATO and the United States. It's not a proxy war, they're at war. The United States has sent in over $100 billion of aid and weapons to Ukraine since this broke out. This is a country in the United States where 63% of the people are living paycheck to paycheck. And they just sent over $100 billion over there. This is a country where they just passed a defense budget of about $860 billion as the homeless situation in a city near you just keeps getting worse. Look at the facts of what's going on. Again, you know, I, we only, you know, write what what they what they put out there, and you have this uh, guy who uh, the prime minister of Sweden, Sweden, and the president of France, Macron, met earlier this week, and they say, "quote." The two leaders reaffirm Europe's determination to support Ukraine in the 10th month of the Russian offensive. Quote, the Ukrainians need our support more than ever, said Macron. Quote, the victory of Ukraine is existential for Europe and for the whole world, said the Swedish prime minister. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You mean what's going on between Russia and Ukraine is existential for the whole world? You mean the people down in Bolivia, Argentina, Ghana, Somalia? I mean, are we, what are we talking about over here? They're ramping this thing in, up into World War III. Mm -hmm. It's begun. So and there's going to be a false flag or a nuclear exchange. NATO chief says sending more weapons to Ukraine, you can't make this up, is the quickest path path to peace. Quote, it may sound like a paradox, but military support for Ukraine is the fastest way to peace, said John Stoltenberg, the guy that runs the NATO. And well, who are you, where am I, six years old? Who are you talking to? More weapons of death are going to bring us to peace? So this is serious what's going on. And that's my greatest concern. Well, because there are a lot of positive trends out there that are going to escalate society. But if this war keeps ramping up, you know, it's the beginning of the end. And I do want to focus on those positive trends because we, we need some, some good news, you know. Um, but just, you know, not to spend more time on this Ukraine-Russia, but, you know, we're on day, what, 319 of the invasion Um Russia highly criticized, obviously, Zelensky's visit to Washington, saying that it showed that neither the U.S. or Ukraine wants peace. Do you agree with that statement? And where do we go from here? How much longer does this play out? Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it, they, they say the United States said, we, we quoted in the, the guy, you know, Ned Price, one after another, saying that this intent, uh, that guy Sullivan, that this is not a time for peace. This is not a time to talk. Oh, by the way, you were mentioning about celebrating the Epiphany. Yeah. What, what is it? The birth of Christ? You know, the oh, the Prince of Peace. 
Oh, you, no, no, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the Prince of Peace. Hey, how did Christmas sales do? You know, I mean, can't you see where this is going? Again, you know, as I said, there's going to be a false flag or a, or a, um, or a, a nuclear exchange to make this official. You know, they said that the um, World War II began when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. You go back to July 19... 41. Do you know what happened? Japan, you could Google this up, history today. Japan had the nerve to go into French Indochina. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt took all the assets of Japan that they had in the United States because they went in there because they were going to go into China. So they took over French Indochina. And they cut off all the oil supplies, 88% of the oil supplies going into Japan. And Japan needs 100% of the oil. And Japan's trade dropped by three quarters. This is before Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. They never talk about that. Oh, and by the way, they put sanctions on Japan for going into French Indochina. What were the French doing over there in... Uh, in, in Vietnam, Cambodia, and, and, uh, and Laos. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, oh and they talk about, oh, the, the, the Japan was stealing the rubber and other tin and that they needed. That's all this is ever about. So what I'm saying to you is that on the economic front, we are in a very dangerous position here. Yeah. And if this war continues to go on like it is, it is going to crash the economies. All things are connected, like the blood which unites us all, said Chief Seattle. On that note, on that note, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, came out, and I feel this didn't get enough press, by the way. Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva warned that the global economy, as you say, Gerald, faces a tough year, tougher than the year we leave behind. Why, you may ask, is she saying this? She goes on to say, we expect one third of the world economy to be in recession because the three big economies, U.S., Europe, and China, are all slowing down simultaneously. Now, she adds, while the U.S. may avoid a recession, uh, she really sees uh, the EU as uh, being severely hit by the war in Ukraine and that half of the EU will be in recession in 2023. China faces the same fate. Japan hit its highest yeah, Japan hit its highest inflation rate in seven decades. The sanctions that they put on Russia have the quote from Biden that was going to punish Putin. It didn't punish Putin, it punished punish the people. Again, it, then you look at the headlines going on and on from place after place. China, December manufacturing contracts at its sharpest pace in almost three years. Wall Street Journal, Chinese economic activity takes big hit. It's one after another. And again, they're making a very bad situation worse by ramping up the war. So let's go back to the reality. Let's go back to 2019, not ancient history. Happy New Year. At that time, Japan was a fraction, excuse me, Germany was a fraction of going into a recession. Let's go back to September of 2019. Hey, remember the repo markets where the Federal Reserve dumped in $10 trillion between September 2019 to January 2020 so they could keep pumping up the markets because they needed more cheap money? Now let's go to the COVID war. They locked down the world. And we're talking about why China's in so much trouble with their zero COVID policy. The businesses that they've destroyed in China and around the world are incalculable. Oh, you're talking about Italy? Now they're talking about Italy, and I think it was the IMF, or one of them just came out, that they're facing the worst financial crisis of all of them concerning their debt level. Yeah. And look at what's happened to the businesses. So now let's put it all together. We're looking at what happened and why it happened. 
So when they began the COVID war, they locked down everything, stay at home, you can't go to work, but hey, here's some cheap money for you. Here, go on, shut up, here's some money. You got a business here, we're gonna give you money. Oh, we're gonna print, uh, we're gonna go to zero in negative interest rates. Well, they stayed on negative interest rates, what, in, in, in Europe for how many years? Oh, only eight in the United States zero interest rate policy. The market should have crashed in 2020. No, we had a real estate boom. We had a, 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 a high tech boom. People were buying and fixing up. Here's more cheap money, here's cheap money. But now, let's go back to the facts. We had the BS from Janet Yellen. Oh, by the way, taken over by the Federal Reserve because she was the head of the Fed and now our Treasury Secretary, along with the guy playing the Fed head, Powell, going on for almost two years Salenti, you're full of baloney, and so are you other people. There is no inflation. It's only temporary. No, 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 no. It's only transitory. They lied about it. They knew it was real. Same thing with Lagarde. So they could keep pumping in that cheap money. Now, here's the big lie. Now they're saying inflation will get better because it was only caused by the supply chain disruptions. Right. Not our cheap money and our zero interest rate policy. You see where this is going? So here's the deal. If the Federal Reserve raises interest rates in February 1st, yeah. even 25 basis points, it's gonna keep pushing the markets down. However, being that it's all about the bottom line, they may be less aggressive in raising interest rates, right. and that's why you're seeing gold prices going up. Right. 